Hello, hello. I today have decided that I want to talk about tools that are used for punching holes. Now, I personally am a bag maker. I make handbags, wallets. Um, I've made things for my rat's cage. Um, lunch bags, you know, just containers of different types. Um, and my primary materials that I use um, tends to be vinyl and waterproof canvas. Um, I also have some non-backed cotton and some uh, canvas that does have a little bit of SF 101 on the back. So I know that a lot of people think that the ideal hole punching tool would be to get one of these bad boys. This is a press, also known as an industrial press, a tabletop press, a hole punch, um, lots of different names that it goes by and it is indeed all of those things because of the fact that these little things they're called die are interchangeable this one is a hole punch die or an owl die and it's <laughs> dirty go figure and it looks like this They usually do come with a little rubber stopper. And what this guy does is when the owl is punched into the fabric, the little stopper will scrunch up and pop back out when you lift the owl out of the fabric so that the fabric is removed from the owl. And as you can see, this is the bottom of it. I'm not going to pull it out because it's in there pretty snug. I have a piece of plastic to hold it a lot tighter inside of this metal piece and the bottom is an adapter um, because it does not fit directly into the hole in the bottom of this. And I'll show you on another one that the bottom piece actually comes out. So you have interchangeable die from the bottom and the top. And you can do, um, this is a rivet setter. That's, like I said, an owl for hole punching. I've got this one that has snap attachments. And there's all kinds of different attachments you can use for those, but today I'm only talking about the hole punching. So in addition to the press with the owl, there are hand owls. And leather tool um, users are a lot more familiar with these. This is a very poorly and cheaply made owl, um, also known as a stiletto because of the long, sharp, pointy end. This is another awl, and I'm sure people would call this one a stiletto as well, um, but I don't because it's not as long as the other one. But this is my absolute number one go-to for everything. It punches holes. It feeds fabric underneath my foot. Um, it's used to hold pieces in place. I use it to press things down. Um, I use it for pretty much anything. It's the un most universal tool that I've got. And it comes in handy at the most random moments. I just automatically reach for it and it works perfect. Next, we have a hole punch that people refer to as the Japanese hole punch. And this one, it's got a wooden handle with a metal shaft. 
this piece comes off. And this tip is interchangeable with different sizes. This is the, can't even get that. That's the biggest tip that this one comes with. So they get a lot smaller than that. And the way this guy works is once you, uh, once you press the handle in, it'll punch the hole, but then the fabric will go into this little chamber and it will eventually come out here. That's how you would empty it. Next, this thing will set still. We've got a surgical seam ripper. This guy is great for punching out holes that uh, will be holding double pronged uh, bag feet. You just use it to indent and then rip a hole. These are my curved needlepoint scissors. Those also work good for making a hole. This is the ever so famous generic hole punch. I don't find it ideal for fabric but I use it when putting together paper patterns when I'm going to be hanging them. Next, we've got some standard scissors. These are just some Fiskars, and yes, they are dirty. These are um, only used for fabric. I've got some gunk on here from cutting something with uh, double-sided tape on that, so I'll have to clean that. But these are ideal when you fold a piece of fabric and then you snip a little bit at the edge. And then I have this set of shears that have more of a needle point to them. You could also use this for direct needle penetration as well as the edge snip. And then I've got my leather hole punch. And this guy you can rotate to uh, six different holes and this is a little big for my hand, but you just punch it like that. And these are the primary tools that I use for doing hole punching. And now I will give you a little demonstration and explain why I use a certain tool for a certain type of uh, punching. So when I'm using vinyl, I primarily we'll use the leather punch, which is ideal for when you are doing something like rivets because it completely removes uh, the fabric from the location that you're punching it. So there's nothing folding up on the opposite side and because this is interchangeable to different sizes if I've got a thicker rivet I can use a thicker hole if I've got a really smaller or really thin rivet I can go one of the tiny holes and the tiniest hole on here is the primary one that I use when I'm using an eight or a nine millimeter hole uh, uh, rivet I'll go up a size if I'm using a nine or a ten and I'll go up one more size if I'm using a, an 11 or a 12. Next, on vinyl, I will also use the Japanese hole punch. And the way this works is you just lay your material down, hold it vertical, and punch. And as you see, you get a nice, clean, solid punch all the way through. Again, nothing bunching up on the back. My next go-to would be this owl. And now this is a little different because it will not remove material. It just literally pushes it out of the way. And I find this more ideal when I want the fabric to sort of wrap around whatever I'm putting through it. So as you can see, it punctures the vinyl, but it pushes it out on the other side. So nothing is actually removed and if you have 
punched a hole with an owl, let's say for a rivet, and it's not in the ideal spot where you want it. You can kind of push the fabric back to where it goes, readjust, and carefully punch a new hole right next to it. See if you can see that. There's the first hole. There's the little space between it, and there's the second hole. I will use this sometimes when I cannot get my leather punch um, around whatever the fabric is if it's too thick. So like for instance, if we go with like eight layers of vinyl, sometimes that could be a little hard to fit eight layers of vinyl and get an even punch. I'll show you here because sometimes it goes a little sideways. See, as you can see, you can't see completely through there because it didn't punch all the way through and it kind of did it at an odd angle. So that's when my owl comes in handy. I can go straight through exactly where I want it to go. And you get the hole straight through you can go right back through the opposite side very carefully and get your hole completely through. Like I said, that is my number one go-to. That is my absolute favorite. Now when you want to use something like needle-edged scissors, these ones are curved so I would lay it down on the fabric and then very gently rock and then wiggle a hole through or because they are snips you can just fold your fabric and cut a very slender hole that way or you can do a cross hole which is like an X fold it in both directions make a snip and then you've got a little X-shaped hole. Now everybody knows how these work. Like I said, they're not ideal for fabric, but something this thin, you can kind of get it going. But look how big that hole is. And you can find some um, smaller ones that will do smaller hole punches. I know that um, in the scrapbooking community they have those little um, like really miniature handheld punches that have different sizes and shapes. You could use those if you absolutely wanted to, but I do not find that to be ideal for any kind of fabric. Next, we've got the surgical seam ripper, and this is ideal for I can find one here. When you're putting on bag feet that require a washer like this, what I will do is I will take the washer, and I'll usually do this on the wrong side, but it doesn't matter because this is a scrap, and I will mark two lines right where I'm going to need to put the holes, lay it down flat on a surface, and push down and pull just along the line. Push down and pull. And then that way you've got your two little slits that are perfect for putting in those bag feet. And then I already showed how to do the snipping, um, the straight snip and the X snip, but I'll show you with the scissors as well. When you've got ones that have um, less pointy ends, just use it to focus the damn camera and do a little snip. And 
when you are doing one with a sharper point, you can do the same thing, or again, you can lay it and very carefully press a hole through. This one doesn't want to cooperate, but I have done it. Again, not ideal. I would reach for an owl before I would reach for those scissors. And then lastly, we've got the tabletop. Let me see if I can get a better angle. Let me set it down and then I'll pick it up. No, you stay right there. All right. Hold still. This is fun. Okay, so you see how, sure, go to focus now. You see how it squishes down? And then when you depress, it keeps the fabric from sticking on the owl. Now, I don't find this ideal because it doesn't always puncture the way it should. This one it did, but you also get this lovely little ring around there and sometimes it makes impressions in the fabric depending on how flimsy it is. And I prefer to use my press for rivets, snaps, and magnets and stuff like that. So I do not necessarily recommend this, although some people do prefer to use one of these and I've got nothing against anybody that prefers those, but my ideal go-to is this, this, and this. These are my top three favorites when it comes to punching holes. And I did not show the punching with this one it's exactly the same as the shorter one. It's just longer. So set that aside. And now we've got the canvas. And for me personally, I would recommend using an owl when puncturing something like this because stuff like this tends to fray. Okay, you do not want fraying. And what happens is when you cut an edge or a hole, you open up the fabric to fraying. And if it's a fabric that will fray, it will fray. So when you puncture it with something that's not taking any of the material out, all you are doing is pushing all of the fibers aside so that you now have a hole without completely damaging the fabric. However, if you are going to back it, like this is with SF-101, punch away. Because even though you are technically opening up, if you can see right there, you can see all of the little spots where it will fray. But because it's backed with the SF-101, it's locked in place. And you can see right here, there is a teeny tiny little bit of the fabric coming apart here. That can be covered up with a rivet. That's not a big deal. Um, you could also use a tiny little piece of double-sided tape, or you could use a speck of glue, um, anything like that fray check just to kind of hold the edges in place if you really want to but as long as it's backed it should be fine if you decided to punch oh that didn't even work because of that okay so if you decide to punch a hole let's see how well I can get this up here you now have all of these loose edges that is why I think that using a hole punch on something like this is not ideal. Because then, you know, you could stretch it around 
and it's just going to pull even more. And then you get all of this and it starts to fray and then everything's messed up and you get pissed off and you want to throw shit and it's not fun. Now, with cotton, you get the same kind of thing. You open it up to fraying, just like that. So I still recommend using a hole punch, or a, um, an owl to punch the hole, not an actual hole punch. Um, but also the same as with this canvas. This is not a thicker canvas, by the way. This is just a, a cheap, flimsy canvas that I got at Walmart. Um, if you back the cotton with like SF 101 or whatever you're going to use, then it could sustain an actual punch. Um, if you'd prefer that. Waterproof canvas. This is a type of canvas that stands up on its own. Um, people don't typically back it with SF-101 or any kind of stabilizer or interfacing. And it's built durable. It really is. You can punch it and it will survive a lot better than cotton or other types of canvas. I mean, obviously the higher quality um, canvas you got it would uh, probably have a better uh, reaction to a hole punch, but I'm just going based off of this. Not everybody can afford to pay 20 or $30 per yard to get good canvas. So, you know, five, six bucks yard at Joann's or Walmart, that's what you get. When it comes to waterproof canvas, it holds up to the hole punches better than it holds up with the owl. As you can see here is the tiny little hole that I punched with the Japanese press. Yes, it does fray a little bit, but waterproof canvas doesn't typically fray. I'm not worried about that. Here is the larger hole that I did with the leather punch. And here is the hole that I punched through with the owl. And as you can see, it's kind of, it's messy. It's coming apart. It doesn't like to be punctured. As you can see, it looks kind of nasty on the back as well. It will sustain. It's just not as neat. I would recommend using an actual punch on waterproof canvas. Let's see that one. As you can see, it turned it into a nipple because, you know, it's an ugly owl punch. So don't recommend. So when it comes down to it, when it comes to all of these different fabrics, and trust me, there are so many more fabrics that I don't have on hand that I can't test for you. And I'm sure there's many other different tools that people use for punching holes. This is just what I personally use. My absolute preference is these three. You know, you can get a decent leather punch. This one's by X, uh, X Tool. I think, no. I don't know who this is by. I thought it was x -tool. Anyways, um, you can get a decent leather punch um, from Amazon for like eight, nine, ten bucks. You could get one at a leather shop. Um, you could probably even find one at a hardware store. Uh, I'm not sure where you can find any of the Japanese hole punches anywhere other than Amazon. That is where I've bought mine. I have this one. And I have this one that's had a lot of use. 
And then I've got my owl. I just recently replaced this. Um, this is the new one. My old one I was using for two years and with constant use it was going dull. The end was starting to bend and it was just getting worn down. So it was high time I replaced it. So that's general hole punching in my opinion. Um, use the seam ripper when you have to make slits for things like bag feet. Use the scissors when you want to do something like an X cut. You can use these for doing X cuts, straight slits, or puncturing, though I don't recommend the puncturing. Um, I have done it, but I don't recommend it. Again, this is just a, a, a stiletto or an owl, um, same as the one that I use primarily. It's just a lot longer, a lot cheaper, a lot uglier, but I have it on hand just in case. Do not recommend using a paper hole punch unless you are using something like cotton or a very, very thin paper, uh, fabric or paper. You could just stick to paper. These are not ideal. And my curved scissors, again, you can use those for straight cuts or for X cuts or for punctures. So definitely something to keep on hand. Just a little bonus you could also use these little snips they also have a sharp tip though they're a little bit more flimsy than my other ones and again the scissors just went over that and the table top punch press whatever you want to call it works not my favorite These are my babies. These are the ones I recommend the most, tried and true, and I will be sticking with them. Um, I do want to also state that I am not a professional. This is all uh, basic knowledge um, that I have picked up over the past couple of years. So I do not claim to have the final word on any of this stuff. Feel free to try any of the tools on your own or ask around and get different opinions. Um, but I hope that this video was helpful to someone because I know that a lot of people don't um, have a lot of knowledge on the different types of tools that are out there. And like I said before, this is not by any means the absolute total of uh, available tools out there. And if you have any tools that I have not shown that you like to use and you'd like to share, feel free to let me know and I will check it out. So I will uh, see you next time. Bye. Okay, so I forgot to share one. This is one that you can use with um, a press or with a mallet or hammer. These are like little cookie cutters, but they are actually not for cutting cookies. Now look, the remnants of a past bag. So on one end, you've got a sharp edge, and on the other end, you've got a dull edge. These are ideal for when you need to cut out the space for something like, I don't know, a lock. Let's see here.
something like this. This is a turn lock where you need to have a hole big enough to install this. So you'd want a hole like that. So what you would do is find the piece, and this is obviously not going to work for this one, but you would find the piece that fits about the exact same size or slightly larger than the hole you need. Put it where you want it on your vinyl and use a mallet or a hammer to cut it out. Or if your piece will fit underneath the uh, plates on a press, actually I could probably take this one off. You can press it down like that. That one didn't cut all the way around, but you get the idea. I think it would probably be more ideal to use, um, there's some round disc plates that you can get for a press that I think that the top piece is a little bit shorter, so it should fit in there a little bit better, or maybe you can find some shorter cutter pieces. But either way, um, this is another hole cutting tool that I do use whenever I install locks and it came in this lovely kit with tons of shapes and sizes that I will never use but the ones that I do use are amazing for cutting out the perfect size holes for lock installation now I'm gonna go away bye